Hi, I'm Steve from Toys and Hood. Today I'm going to be taking a look at Imperial Armour Volume 4, The Enfelian Project. This is the new Forge World book. It's, um, it's Red Scorpions and Imperial Guard versus Tyranids, basically. Um, I'm going to look through the book and just have a chat about it, what's changed between editions. But before I do, if you enjoy this video, then please subscribe to our channel. We're on Twitter as at Toys in the Hood. We're on Facebook if you search Toys in the Hood. And we have a website, toysinthehood.com. Um, so please take a look at those. Um, anyway, on with the review. So this is the second edition of, um, of the Infelian project. The, uh, the first edition would have been produced, oh, I think, ten years ago when um, Forge World did a large range of Tyranid models that went with it. That's the first introduction we got to the new Forge World look Red Scorpions. Red Scorpions have been in the background for, um, for years and years. Uh, I think they're in the original Rogue Trader. Um, but then they just mentioned occasionally in the background, but this is where Forge World take them and make them our own. And it also has more Elysian drop troops. These are the Imperial Guard drop troop regiment. That, uh, that Forge World have produced a lot of extras for. In fact, the whole range of Elysians is done by um, by Forge World only. So, it's a hardback book. It's it, similar to the uh, the Codexes now, but um, it is a bigger a bigger book. Um, we've got new artwork on the front there. It's slimmer than the original book, um, as well. Nice big Bio Titan on the front. And the book is split up into the Order Xenos Prohibited Archives. This is the, the story and the Tyranids. The, um, the detachments. This is Detachment D99. This is the Special Imperial Guard Regiment that's sent there. The Red Scorpion rules. The campaign of the Anfelian Project. The Zone Mortalis rules in the appendix. And then Anfelian Base Floor Pans. So we'll just take a look at that. So to begin with, the um, now I've got the introduction. The symbols that you use, so Warhammer 40,000 creatures will be in here. There's gargantuan creatures, Lords of War, flying gargantuan creatures. So you can use these with regular 40k games. So all the Forge World books are really nicely presented. They've got lots of um, lots of insets, lots of nice pictures. Um, so here this starts. It's um, I won't give too much away. The basic story is it's sort of a Jurassic Park on a um, on a, on a planet. They're studying Tyranids. And they're in the Infelian base, and um, and this is protected by um, by electric shields, uh, and of course, inevitably, these shields give out, and the Tyranids overrun the base, uh, and then there's a series of adventures that and missions that go on there as the Red Scorpions try to push them back. Um, the story seems to be the same as the first edition. Uh, looking for it, a few more colour pictures, but on the whole, it's the same. Um, the beginning bit but it's a great story and there's, there's some brilliant twists in it so uh so yes yeah, it's, it's a cracking story to get into so here we go it gives you the details of all the, the troops and stories pictures there's a trigon that would be the old resin trigon um Elysians. you get these quite common to forge world books and they they seem to have found their way into the normal codexes now are these uh these pictures of just the colour schemes, which are really handy when you're building an army. The um, the original Anfelian project, when I was building my Red Scorpions, I just sat there with a book uh, and copied everything. The um, So we've got an Elysian Trooper here, Plasma Gun. It's, just, it's great to see these guys. These are like the um, Osprey do a whole range of history books where you get the templates that show you what the troops would look like in the days. And basically the Forge World books are very much the kind of equivalent of that. Um, I always get the feeling that the Forge World guys are really into their, their history anyway. A lot of the tanks have their feel of World War II tanks. Um, and then the books, they carry that look into it as well. So you've almost these almost technical drawings just to give you an idea of what everything looks like. Right. But as I say, this, this, tell, this tells a story and it sets the scene. Uh, there's a winged hive tyrant. Obviously your fences aren't much good against that. I'm just flicking through to give you an idea. Some great artwork. You really see them coming to life here. Lots of blood. They're very reminiscent of Starship Troopers, something like this. Red Scorpion Thunderhawk gunship. 
Right. And then we get to the prohibited archives. So first off, we look at the Ordo Xenos prohibited archives. These are the Tyranids through here. And the first Tyranid we've got is the Dimacaron. This is the um, this is the new creature for the book. We've not seen this before. It's sort of a giant lictor. It's um, it's designed to take out the uh, the enemy commanders. Um, the stat lines here: it's two hundred points, weapon skill eight, strength six, toughness six, six wounds. Um, so it's a big old beast. It's a fast attack choice. Um, it's um, its type is it's a leaper. Which means that it's um, it basically ignores difficult terrain. Uh, it only moves um, it only moves six inches. It's not hugely fast, but it does get hammer of wrath when it hits in the assault phase. Um, it's got grasping talons, give it plus one strength and uh, AP two. Um, spine more strike, which gives you additional attacks um, as you do it. You uh, you cause instant death. You've got a thorax spine more here, which is um, that's uh, strength plus four, AP one, instant death. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's pretty cool at killing characters. Is the is the idea? Um, yeah, I mean toughness six, wound six, point it in the enemy direction and just uh, just send it in. Um, it can gain feel no pain with four plus special uh, special rule as it inflicts damage with the digestion spine. So yeah, it's pretty cool. And uh, I think I'll have to get one for my uh, my Tyranid army. Um, I was surprised looking at the model. The model looks very big. I thought it was going to be a, uh, like a small gargantuan creature, but uh, but no, it's a regular choice for your regular 40k army. So uh, I'll definitely be getting one of those. We've got the Hierophant Bio Titan. He's he's in here again. Now he's already in the Apocalypse book, um, but they've repeated the rules. But they also here. So you've got your Bio Titan. Um, they've also now added the upgrades that are in the um, Forge World Apocalypse book. So everything's in one place. So um, you can start giving them upgrades. So it's a thousand points for a Bio Titan, which is a lot of points. Although Strength 10, Toughness 9, 10 Wounds, it's got two Bio Cannons, which are um, Strength 10, AP 3, uh, Assault 6. So uh, it kicks out a lot of firepower. And then you get these little upgrades. You can give it one upgrade. And the choice is like, there's... Um, Bioplasma Torrent. So for just 30 points, this gives you the Hellstorm template. That's the big flame template used in Apocalypse games, uh, and of course regular games now. And that's Strength 5, AP 3, uh, plus it Blind, plus it Soul Blaze. Uh, and that is for a mere 30 points. So um, so that's fantastic. Or you can have you have Spore Mine, Swarm Spitter. This is 30 points again for a, a range of 10 foot. Strength 4, AP 4, Apocalyptic Barrage 8. Um, or you can give it Skyfire, which of course is something Tyranids lack. So you can give it a, um, a Spine Cloud Spray. This is 40 points, and it's uh, range 48 inches, strength 7, AP 5. So strength 7, pretty good for the lighter flyers. Uh, heavy 6, Skyfire and Twin Linked. So that overcomes the weakness of the Biotype with the Ballistic Skill 3. It's a gargantuan creature, so it can shoot all of its weapons at different targets. So I, I just, yeah, I just... I think if you take a Bio Titan, you'll definitely be taking one of these upgrades. Um, you know, there are a tiny amount of points. The, the choice really is which one. I mean, if you haven't got any flyers, then uh, it seems to me the uh, the Spine Cloud Spray would be the one. But uh, but if you have, then the Hellstorm template will just clear out a great amount of just basic troops. So uh, so yeah, uh, I love the Bio Titan. Sadly, I haven't got one because they're uh, they're two hundred pounds. But again, he's on the list. Um, got the Hive Tyrant. Got the old hive tyrant model there, the old winged hive tyrant. Sived hive drool again, a gargantuan creature. We've seen all these rules before, but now it's clarified. It's a Lord of War. It's a gargantuan creature. The uh, sived hive drool has um, it's a large, large creature. It's got a um, it's got like a, a giant flame weapon, a bio acid spray. That's uh, Hellstorm's template again. Strength six, AP three. Um, it's also agile, an agile monster, so it can move 12 inches because it's gargantuan. It can then um, fire a weapon but still run. Well, it's only got one weapon, so it's going to fire that and still run every turn. Or it can not fire it and then it can run twice. So, so it's, quite, it's quite fast, actually. Um, 500 points. Uh, toughness 8, 6 wounds. I have played with these a few times. I find them to be a little bit weak, to be honest. Just because uh, because people want them dead, they tend to hit them with everything. They don't last very long. But still, they're good fun, and they do scare the crap out of people. 
Um, the barbed hydrogel, barbed hydrogel is similar to side hydrogel, but it's got two of the bio cannons that we've seen on the um, on the bio titan. Uh, 565 points this time. Um, range 48 inches, strength 10, AP3, assault 6. It's got two of them. So it's firing 12 strength 10 shots a turn. Uh, and it's not bad at strength 10, it's not bad in close combat either. Um, Tyranid Strikes, now these are in the basic rules. So you wing Tyranid Warriors. It's just nice, nice to see the pictures of these. And then you've got a bit more background as well. Um, the Harridan, this is the giant uh, giant flying um, flying Tyranid that carries gargoyles into battle as well. It can carry 20 gargoyles. Again, two bio cannons. So the, these, these gargantuan creatures suddenly give you a lot of heavy weapons. Uh, 735 points. So I've used this before on a 1500 point one. You'll have seen the picture on my Facebook page where I had a Harridan, uh, two Turvigons, uh, two lots of Termigants. This was under the old rules. Um, and, uh, no, sorry, I think it was the new rules. Um, and a, and a Death Leaper leading it. And that, that was the army. Sorry, no, I've got that wrong. Sorry. It was a Harridan. It was uh, one Turvigon, 30 Termigants, and Death Leaper. That comes to, that gave you 1,500 points. Malanthropes, Malanthropes you've seen in the Apocalypse book, I think. They keep getting new rules. Um, the, um, this time round, they, uh, they can issue a challenge, um, even though they're not characters. Um, and they, they get to... Um, they reduce the, um, the attacks of the character that they're uh, fighting. They reduce its initiative to one. Um, when they kill something, uh, all Tyranid units, all friendly Tyranid units, gain the preferred enemy for uh, all units from the same codex as a destroyed enemy unit, as long as they're within synapse range of a uh, Malanthrope. Now, um, let's see, Malanthropes are elite choices. They're 85 points, strength 5, toughness 5, 4 wounds. Um, poisoned 2+. plus. Um, shrouded and... Oh, Spore Cloud. I'm trying to think if Spore Cloud is uh, the same rules as the, um, the Venomthrope. But certainly the rules are similar to a Venomthrope there. It's something you want to put in the centre of the army to get the maximum benefit from its uh, special rules. Trigon. Again, a lot of these are in the main rule book for, their, uh, for Tyranids. There's Ripper Swarms. In fact, they don't even repeat the, the, uh, the rules. They just have a bit of background. The data template. Myotic Spores. These are large spore mines. When these explode, they, um, they release more, um, more spore mines. Or it's a strength 5, AP4, large blast. So basically a very big spore mine for 45 points. Stone Crusher Carnifex. This is the, um, the Forge World version of the Carnifex. Normal Carnifex model, but it's got, um, it's got giant claws uh, and I think a mace for this. So this gets, it starts at strength 10, so it's slightly stronger than a normal Carnifex. Uh, 150 points, so it's a few more points. Um, it's got Wrecker Claws. Wrecker Claws are um, uh, AP1. They have the Wrecker special rule, which re-rolls failed armor penetration vehicle uh, rolls against fortifications and structures, um, and gives you plus one to the damage. Um, the Sunder rule then get, lets you re-roll all failed armor penetration rolls. So um, I don't know why it needs two special rules. I guess they're, they're probably repeated somewhere else. But um, yeah, he's looking pretty cool. Uh, there's a picture. The model looks pretty much like that. So you've got these giant battering rams. Right, which takes us on to the Elysians. So now we'll take a look at Detachment D99. This is the Elysian Drop Troops Regiment that um, that Inquisitor Locke has seconded to help him with the Amphelion project. They're genetically enhanced, they've got improved stats. Um, Forge World have also taken this opportunity to improve the Elysian rule. The Elysians have, have been Forge World's own regiment. Um, they were really, they were great when they came out, which I think was in 4th edition, and um, everything could deep strike. Now, come 6th edition, 7th edition, you can't deep strike on the first turn anymore. The um, the drop troops, they, they basically sucked at what they were good at. Now they've given them combat drop rule. This is basically the same as the Space Marine rule, for where half your army turns up on the first turn. So you don't have that, that horrible moment of, 
am I going to lose because I've got nothing on the table? You know half of your stuff is going to turn up. Um, they're an elite force. You can take them as allies with other, other Imperial forces. Because they're an elite force, if you take them as a primary detachment, you can't take them as Lords of War. Uh, sorry, you can't take them with a Lord of War. Now, as I say, they're genetically enhanced. Now, they, can, they get their own Warlord trait. And um, you can, rather than roll on any of the Warlord traits in the rulebook, you can just pick to take the Inquisitorial Experiment Detachment. Now, um, if, you, um, if you take this, then what you can do is you can swap Preferred Enemy Tyranids, which almost all your forces have, um, you can swap that rule for Preferred Enemy Orcs, Tau Empire, Eldar, Dark Eldar, or Necrons. However, if you do that, you have to take a disadvantage. The disadvantage is either unstable, meta metabolic, unstable metabolic uh, reaction, anomalous dermal calcification, and high, hyper-aggressive tendencies. <sighs> um, basically, one of them, you start taking casualties um, whenever you charge or pass a leadership test. The other one, you um, you roll an extra dice when running or, or charging, and uh, you actually have to discard the highest dice you roll. Um, and then high progressive tendencies, you um, you basically charge towards the um, nearest enemy unit whenever you make a consolidation move. And um, and if you do not make a shooting attack, you must make a run move towards the closest fire by enemy unit. So uh, it's a bit of a trade-off there. The preferred enemy is really powerful, but you've got to take the disadvantage. Um, You've also got extra um, extra equipment. There's long range ground scanner. This can be set up to um, basically to prevent infiltrators um, or to make a unit um, yeah make a unit twin linked um, for that. Okay, and you've got some spotters as well, which help out your snipers in your unit. You've got some Imperial Armed Navy upgrades. I think I've seen this in every single Forge World book now. Uh, armoured Cockpit lets you ignore crew shaking or stunned results on a 4+. Plus. Uh, chaff Launches give you a 4+, plus and vulnerable save against uh, missiles. Infrared Targeting lets you have night vision. Illum, fra fla uh, Illum Flares um, give you a marker that lights up the area, so uh, everyone gets night vision in that area. Uh, and then Distinctive Pain Schemes lets you re-roll a morale test. Breacher charges, these are um, an assault weapon, a 3 inch template that gives you strength 8, AP 2. Um, the Wrecker special rules are the same as the Tyranids, uh, the Carnifex. This uh, lets you reroll armor penetration against uh, fortifications and immobile structures and gives you plus 1 to damage result. You've got Laz Cutters, which are a type of weapon that's strength 9, AP 2. Um, and then the Tracking Beacon, which is, um, is basically a, um, a teleport hammer. So onto the list, you've got Solomon Locke, as I say, he's the main character here, he's an Inquisitor, so he's only 60 points, Inquisitors are ever so, uh, ever so cheap now, but he comes with lots of toys, digital weapons, mastercrafted power swords, um, Artificer Armour gives him a 2 plus save, um, he's got his retinue, he's got a new character as well, I've not seen a model from Forge World for this one, this is a special, um, the commander of the detachment, um, you can either upgrade it as part of the command squad or you can take him as part of the retinue, um, And so he lets you take a Valkyrie, um, heavy chainsword, refractor field, carapace armor. I guess he's thirty-five points for a three wound character, weapon skill five. So he's pretty, he's he's pretty cool. Um, there's your setup for the special detachment. You've got your command squad, so you can take the tracking beacons. You can start taking. Um, oh, where is it? No, maybe it's not here that you buy them. I was thinking the. Um, Target locks. Okay, so a fairly standard command squad there. You've got the plus one ballistic skill, plus one weapon skill on most of the troops there. Um, your basic troops is a veteran squad. So you take squad to ten, you can take lots of options there. Very similar to the, the normal Imperial Guard one. Uh, except you get the deep strike rule, preferred enemy tyranids, and then the surgical enhancement rule, which is these improved stats. In fact, plus one initiative as well. So you plus plus one weapon skill, plus one ballistic skill, and plus one initiative. And that's 50 points for 10 men. Oops, no it's not. Sorry, it's 50 points for five men. So that's a huge difference. So 10 points are men. 
Pitch of the weapons, it's always important. <laughs> for a start, it means you can see what you're going to build the models up with. Uh, for quite a while, Workshop didn't put pictures of weapons in books uh, and kind of just expected you to guess what a plasma gun is. Not a problem when you've been doing the hobby for years. Bit of a problem when uh, when you're just starting out. And of course, new, new, ca uh, new players are very important to us because that's what keeps Workshop going. Indeed, the whole industry. So they can take dedicated transports, they can take the Valkyrie. Um, they then get these rather cool. You've got decimation squads, um, which are designed to infiltrate. Um, you've got veterans and snipers in there, um, together with the spotters. The um, just a little two-man team. Then there's um, extermination squads. Extermination squads. They can all take heavy flamers or grenade launchers. So they they come with um, they come with flamers. So it's a whole unit of flamers, and then you can upgrade those to heavy flamers for plus ten points, or just upgrade them for grenade launchers. So, um, quite a cool squad there. Deep striking in. I think you're looking at one very dead Tyranid squad. Uh, and then executioner squads. Executioner squads come with shotguns as standard, but you can upgrade the whole um, the whole squad can be upgraded with plasma guns. It's expensive. It's 15 points a model. Or melter guns. Again, 10 points a model. So you'd be looking at you know 105 points for a five man melter gun unit. But these guys deep strike. So if you can get them and you can deep strike accurately and you can land next to something, I mean those melter guns, a squad of Squad of five of those. I mean, you won't take out an Imperial Knight, but you'll certainly give him a bloody nose for the rest of the game. Then you've got drop sentinels. So these are basic sentinels that they, they drop strike in. Uh, sorry, deep strike in. A little bit more expensive than normal sentinels. Um, Valkyrie Sky Talon. Um, this can carry the Taurus Venator or it carries the, um, the sentinels in. Taurus Squadron, a Taurus, the, um, the Taurus is like a buggy that the Elysians use, they're dropped from uh, Valkyries, um, some of them have, uh, have heavy weapons on the back, you've got the, uh, the Venator has a twin link multi-laser, the, uh, the normal Taurus has a heavy flamer on, uh, you can upgrade both those, the Taurus can be upgraded to a grenade launcher, the, uh, the Venator can be upgraded to have um, a twin link last cannon, um, I mean strength 10, 10 vehicles, they're fast open tops. And they can ignore immobilized results on a full plus. And they re-roll dangerous terrain tests. And then the heavy support is a vulture gunship. The vulture gunship you can give a punisher cannon to. Um, or at least you used to be able to. Yes, you can take a twin link punisher gatling cannon. It's an expensive plus 50 point option. So that's 175 points. But that is a strength 5 heavy 20 weapon. Um, when it's, tw it's twin linked, so uh, with ballistic skill four, you're not likely to miss. So that's a uh, that's pretty cool. These guys, I mean, they're very much with the flamers and things. They're very much about destroying lots and lots of hordes of tyranids. And then you've got a sentry gun battery. Again, you can deep strike those in. Um, sentry guns. If you've not seen them before, these are um, like aliens when they set up the guns in the corridor. It's the same kind of thing. You um, you drop a sentry gun. It's programmed. You either set it up in point defence mode, in which case it um, it engages enemy targets up to three foot away within 90 degrees at the front, and um, or you can set it up as sentry mode, in which case it targets any enemy unit within 18 inches um, that's in line of sight, and that can fire 360 degrees. Uh, Cyclops demolition unit squad. Uh, Cyclops are like the um, oh gosh, I think they're called Goliaths in World War Two. These are small, um, um, small tracked bombs, and you you just drive them into um, to enemy vehicles, enemy fortifications. So the Cyclops charge you um, you drive it in. It's, it's essentially it's an assault. It happens at initiative ten, and it'll explode. And it explodes strength nine, AP three, and it's an ordnance large blast. Um, 185 points, we get two of the vehicles. Um, does seem quite expensive. Um, although, uh, two Cyclops demolition vehicles and two operators forming a unit carried in a Valkyrie dedicated squadron, a uh, dedicated transport. So I guess you get your Valkyrie, your two demolition vehicles, and your two controllers. So, uh, so that's not too bad for 185 points. Okay, and that takes us on to the Red Scorpions. So I love Red Scorpions, they're, um, they're the Space Marine chapter that, uh, that I collect. I was very lucky, I was working for Workshop at the time, it was when Apocalypse came out, and we got given a Space Marine Battle Company. So, uh, so that was 100 Marines given to me for free, 
Um, and of course, when you're at workshop, you get everything really cheap, which is brilliant. Uh, but I wanted to make them a bit special, so um, so the Red Scorpions have come out. So I bought all the shoulder pads and uh, and, and all the extras for that. Um, and I've been collecting them ever since. Um, so I must have I must have at least ten thousand points of Red Scorpions. But um, yeah, they're they're Forge World's own Space Marine um, Space Marine chapter. The um, you've got a bit more background here. There's a bit of it feels like a bit of a cop out. The Space Marine origins of the Red Scorpions are mysterious. They're an unknown founding. Um, the uh, they're very big on their genetic purity. Um, the apothecaries are throughout the Red Scorpions. There's lots and lots of apothecaries, and they'll um, they'll accompany them into battle. The uh, the Red Scorpions are called in to help for the Anthelion project. Here they've got they've got a very military paint scheme with the grey and the uh, the kind of dark yellow. Um, much more military than something like the Ultramarines. Nice bit about the organisation and things. So the key thing about the organisation is the fact the Apothecaries will sometimes fight with the tactical squads. A um, little bit of history, they're in the Siege of Rax. Of course the Siege of Rax is another Imperial, um, Imperial armour book. So more squads, you see all the symbols, your tactical markings, your, um, your logo there the um the different armor it's um mark four um power armor and you've got some additional rules so we seem to constantly have additional rules i think this is the fifth book i've bought to get hold of red scorpion rules um but this updates it for sixth edition and uh, and that'll carry on into seventh edition so so this is a good book for it's pretty much a necessity if you've got a red scorpion army um so you get the rule purity above all purity above all lets you swap your sergeant or veteran sergeant uh in your tactical marines can be swapped for an apothecary um, the apothecary gets enough CM, so he gets feel no pain on a five plus for his unit. But then you can upgrade him, so he's a veteran sergeant with this extra upgrade for free. So that's quite cool. That's their chapter tactics. But then you get fortitude and contempt, where um, you may not voluntarily go to ground, and you may not be equipped with camo cloaks. Um, the uh, the red scorpions are um, used to be pride in their colours. They used to call that. Um, you've got some chapter relics. You've got the um, the relic blades that, that you get as normal. They can be upgraded to Tears of the Scorpion for an extra 10 points. Depending on what type you get, you um, you get extra rules. But um, basically you're looking at Murderous Strike. This is a rule they've all got in common. This, um, if you roll a 6 to wound, it will cause instant death. And then you've got some characters of note. So you've got Commander Carol Cole. This is the, um, the Terminator who's leading the... Um, Leads leads the company um, in the Anfelian project. He has Master of Battle, so um, anyone in the same detachment as Carab Cole, any Red Scorpions, may use his leadership value, rather handy leadership 10. Um, against all odds, so he may, may re-roll all attacks in close combat when outnumbered in an assault. He also grants himself um, a squad counter-attack and stubborn. And if he's the Warlord, he gets proud to live, proud to die, hard to kill. This is uh, this warlord trait gives um, gives you plus one to your um, your combat revolution resolution uh, if you're within twelve inches of Kar Karakol. Oh, but he may never benefit from the lookouts uh, special rule. <laughs> so yeah, so 165 points. Terminator armor, teleport homer, iron halo. He's uh, tears the scorpion sword, so he's inflicting into the death. Um, he's not as good as he used to be. He used to get a. a bonus attacks like uh, Lilith Hesperax if um, if your opponent's weapon skill was higher uh, sorry was if the opponent's weapon skill was lower he'd get extra attacks uh, equal to the difference in how many. so quite often he'd get a, a couple of extra attacks Dreadnought Brother Halas is one of the um, the characters in this special Dreadnought he's got a Flamestorm Cannon um, which is the same as on the Redeemer's Strength 6 AP3 uh, when he loses his last hold point, but if he doesn't explode, he um, he'll keep fighting for another turn. Um, after which he'll then be he'll then be destroyed. So 145 points. Um, he's he seems to me because he keeps fighting, probably a little bit better than a veteran dreadnought. Um, and then veteran sergeant has he's an upgrade for a um, for a um, a stern guard squad. 
basically the key thing he does is he gives the squad the relentless special rule so normally i mean normally i take stern guard with a special ammo and um so um it, it doesn't matter so much with that uh, as they can still fire at their full range but um but if you start taking las cannons and other heavy weapons in that squad then then that's really cool so that's the Red Scorpions. It's a fairly small section, but of course Red Scorpions are basically Space Marines. So just the extra rules, just let you tailor them and have a, a proper Red Scorpion force. Um, as I say, as a Red Scorpion player, I was I was, I was pretty happy with this. Uh, I've yet to play any games with them. Um, I've been using my Tyranids more lately. But, um, but yeah, I, I'm looking forward to trying them out. And the next part is the Amphelion Project Campaign. So now we look at the Amphelion Project Campaign. Now, um, Forge World is quite a cool way of doing the, their campaigns. The, uh, I first saw this in the Horus Heresy Betrayal book. That's the, um, the large, the first of the Horus Heresy rule books. Um, what you do is you, you basically you play a campaign. They, they've designed it to be flexible. So the, the key thing is you play for as long as you want. But at certain points you have key finale missions. Um, and these will affect the campaign. So here you've got four of these finale missions that you, you have to play. And then you can fit in other games as well. So um, so you, you don't have the stress of having to play at certain days. Because, of course, real life has a horrible way of getting in the way of gaming. Um, so so it, it takes away a lot of that... Um, oh, what's the word? The... Um, <laughs> commitment, I guess, is terrible. It is. You can relax and you can enjoy it. And that's really what gaming is about. So... Um, here you've got rules for when you take casualties for your characters because they can they can damage themselves from game to game. Um, different rules for limiting forces. So different missions um, specifically for the Amphelion project. Uh, search and destroy mission. These these use the um, the Mortalis um, section boards. These are little I think a 12 inch by 12 inch boards that you can use. Um, to represent space hulks and buildings. It used to be in the old Amphelion project you could buy the buildings. Uh, sadly they didn't bring those back uh, for this. Um, but these uh, the Zone Mortalis boards will, will, will do the job just as well. So you've got some layouts there. You've got a few missions using those. Got some normal um, normal missions as well. I say I don't, I don't want to spoil too much with these because I don't want to give anything away for the um, um, for the for the campaign and the story because the story is really good. Um, but yeah, you've got some nice nice detailed missions here, and then you've got the Zone Mortalis campaign rules. These are um, sorry campaign appendix. So Zone Mortalis is um, Forge World have had these rules for ages. It's the um, the rules for fighting inside of Space Hulks. Um, you get special rules, for example, if um, Overwatch, because of the confines of uh, corridors, Overwatch is more effective, so you use your normal ballistic skill, you don't snap fire. Um, and it makes combat very bloody, um, which is great, especially when you've got Tyranids versus something, because you've got hundreds of Tyranids coming at you. Space Marines get a chance to gun them down. Um, so it's pretty cool. The, um, you get some new uh, Warlord traits for defenders and for attackers. Um, Mortalis. Um, okay, different rules for terrain and things. Um, you used to be able to shoot for. Yeah, you've got bulkheads, stratagems to use. So there's some cool stuff there. And then you've got these base floor plans. If you um, you photocopy these, um, I think they are. Um, you need to double the size of them, and you can use those to um, to represent the base when you're playing. So that's pretty cool. I say shame they're down the models, and that's really the book. So that's the Amphelion Project 2nd Edition. Um, a few bits didn't make it through. It's a smaller book um, for a start. I think part of that is the old book used to have all the gargantuan creature rules in um, and things. They were... Um, those rules took up a lot of space. Of course, they're now in the main rule book, so we don't need to worry about that. There were a few casualties in terms of models. The um, This here is the um, spawning, spawning nest, uh, the brood nest. Um, there's no rules for that, unfortunately, anymore. So, um, I mean, it still make a handy objective marker, so that's cool. Um, but yeah, that's that's gone. Uh, another casualty, you used to have models for the perimeter fence. 
sadly they're not in there anymore um, and as I said the buildings they used to make models for those and they were incredible uh, and they don't make those but at the same time they have started making a range of plastic scenery games workshop so I guess you could just use that um, plus I'm becoming a huge fan of these laser cut um, wooden scenery as well so um, so yeah on on the whole it's kind of it's it's more of the same book I think it's slightly cheaper I think I paid something like 36 pounds for this I'm sure the older one was over 40 um, but then you get half the book is it a must buy I think as a Tyranid player it's nice I would say you get the rules for the Dimarchaean in there um, but there's nothing else really new. If you've already got Imperial Armor Apocalypse, you've already got the upgrade rules for the Titans. Um, and then Apocalypse itself has a rules for lots of the other Lord of the Wars. Uh, of course, they're also repeated in um, uh, Escalation. So, as a Tyranid player, you don't have to have it, but it is a cool book to have. Um, as a Red Scorpion player, it's fairly essential, uh, although you can just download the, uh, the Chapter Tactics from the Forge World website. For red scorpions and also the special rules um for, for red scorpions there's some cool characters in the badab war part one so maybe i'd be more inclined to get that one um and then for elysians i think it's a must-have book if you're an elysian player um for me having red scorpions and tyranids plus my mate's got um elysians this really seemed like an ideal book to get. Uh, the campaign rules are fun. There's some good ideas there. Um, I think really, I'm mean, say for thirty-six pounds, I think it's uh, I think it's good value. And um, and yeah, I, th I think on the whole, I'd I'd recommend this book. Um, yeah. So I've been Steve Yates from Toys and the Hood. Hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's given you a good insight to this. And uh, hopefully, we'll see you soon. Cheers.